Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the sixth video in a playlist on central concepts in inferential statistics. Uh, the video is called Inferential Statistics. The previous five videos were the first I did in support of the book three years ago. The focus was on how the first four concepts worked together. I then moved on to do another 45 videos on other concepts in the book. Now I'm coming back to finish the story. First with this video explaining the overall concept of inferential statistics, and the next one will be about confidence intervals, which, along with hypothesis testing, are the two main methods for promoting, performing inferential statistics. See statistics from a to z.com slash videos for the latest status of my videos, uh, those completed and planned. As usual, in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding or KTUs. This will give you the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are five KTUs. The first key says, in inferential statistics, we calculate a numerical property of a sample of data, for example, the sample mean, and we use it to infer, that is to estimate, the value of that property for the population or process from which the sample was collected. KTU number two says, we make these inferences with a specified level of confidence. The level of confidence is one minus the level of significance, which is alpha. We select the value for alpha. Key number three says, confidence interval is one of the two main methods used in inferential statistics. Key to understanding number four says, hypothesis testing is the other. KTU number five says, inferential statistics is involved in such analyses as ANOM, ANOVA, chi-square tests, f-tests, regression, t-tests, and z-tests. And here on one page are all five keys to understanding the concepts in inferential statistics. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, now let's take a closer look at each key to understanding. First, KTU number one says, in inferential statistics, we calculate a numerical property of a sample of data, for example, the sample mean, and we use it to infer, that is to estimate, the value of that property for the population or process from which the sample was collected. To understand inferential statistics, it may be helpful to understand what it is not. Inferential statistics is not like descriptive statistics, which are the statistics kept in sports, for example. In descriptive statistics, we have all the data for an entire population or process, as shown in this example from the New York Knicks and the NBA basketball team in, in the 2016 to 2017 season. We know how many points Carmelo Anthony scored in the season, and we know how many games he played, so we can divide the total points by the games played to determine his mean points per game, which is 22.4. So, we can calculate numerical values which describes its statistical properties. For a population or process, <clears throat> these, processes, these properties are called parameters. Examples of parameters include mean, mode, median, proportion, standard deviation, variance, skewness, and kurtosis. But most often we don't have all the data from the entire universe under consideration, that is from the population or process. 
It is impractical or impossible to collect data from all the residents of an entire country, for example. And for an ongoing manufacturing process, for example, new data are constantly being created by the process. So whatever we gather will be incomplete soon afterward. So we collect a sample of data. Then we calculate a statistical property for that sample. For example, the mean or the standard deviation. These sample properties are called statistics. For every population or process parameter, there is a corresponding sample statistic. In inferential statistics, the value of the sample statistic, for example, the sample mean, becomes our estimate, that is our inference, of the value of its corresponding population or process parameter, uh, in this case the population mean. But how good is this estimate? Since it's usually impossible to know the exact value of a population or process parameter, one might think that we could never know with 100% accuracy if our sample's estimate is accurate or even close. But through inferential statistics, we can specify precisely the level of confidence that we need. For example, let's say we measured the height of a sample of adult males and calculated the mean, the average, as 175 centimeters. We can specify that we want a 95% level of confidence. Depending on the sample size and the amount of variation of the measurements in the sample, we could come up with a result that said, with a 95% level of confidence, the mean height of adult males in the population is 175 centimeters plus or minus 5 centimeters. The plus or minus 5 centimeters is the margin of er error. It tells us that this is an interval estimate. More on this when we get to confidence intervals. The level of confidence in the plus or minus range, the margin of error, will determine the sample size. Key to understanding number two says, we make these inferences with a specified level of confidence. The level of confidence is one minus the level of significance, alpha. We select the value for alpha. We can never be 100% certain about an estimate, but inferential statistics enables us to get close to that. In fact, the most common level of confidence is 95%, that is 0.95. The good news is that in inferential statistics, we get to select the level of confidence. But what exactly are we confident about when we say we want a certain level of confidence? We want to be confident that our conclusion is not a false positive. A false positive in this case would be to conclude that the mean height is 175 centimeters plus or minus 5 centimeters, when in fact the true population mean was outside that range. A false positive is called an alpha error or a type 1 error. Alpha is the maximum probability of an alpha error, which we are willing to tolerate. We get to select the value of alpha. Alpha equals 1 minus the level of confidence. If we want a 95% level of confidence, we select alpha equals 5%. Most spreadsheets or software will expect you to enter this as 0.05. Key to understanding number three says, confidence intervals is one of the two main methods used in inferential statistics. Earlier, we gave an example of an interval, as interval estimate. The mean height of adult males in the population is 175 centimeters plus or minus 5 centimeters. This plus or minus amount 5 centimeters is called the margin of error and we have an, uh, the article in the book and we also have a video on the channel by that name. Our inferential statistical analysis had to come to the conclusion that the true population mean is somewhere in the interval of 170 to 180 centimeters with a 95% level of confidence. That interval is a confidence interval. In inferential statistics, before we collect a sample of data, we must select a value for alpha, which is 1 minus the level of confidence. In this illustration, we want a 95% level of confidence, so we select alpha 
equals 5%. We use the selected value of alpha to mark off shaded areas under one or both tails of the distribution curve of a test statistic such as Z. Here we have a two-tailed Z-test. In this example, a plus or minus interval tells us to split alpha, which is 5%, in half and shade under each tail 2.5% of the area under the curve. The boundaries of the two shaded areas give us some essential information, as we'll see next. The inner boundaries of these shaded areas are called the critical values of the test statistic. Between these boundaries is an interval, but it, it, it is in units of the test statistic, z in this example. We need to convert it to units of the original data, centimeters, in order to get confidence limits, which define the confidence interval. We just use the formula for the test statistic to make this conversion, as shown on the right side of this illustration. The confidence interval method can be used to determine whether there is a statistically significant difference between our sample statistic and a specified value for a parameter, say a historical mean or a target mean for a population or process. In this type of analysis, if the specified value is within a confidence interval, we conclude that there is not a statistically significant difference between that specified value and the actual value for the population or process. There are individual articles in the book for all these concepts, including alpha, critical value, level of confidence, test statistic, uh, and I will do videos on confidence intervals after this video is completed. Key to understanding number four says, hypothesis testing is the other main method used in inferential statistics. There are two chapters in the book and two videos on the subject of hypothesis testing, so we won't go into detail here. Um, Suffice it to say that hypothesis testing can be done in five steps. Step number one is state the problem or question in the form of a null hypothesis. Step two is select a level of significance, alpha. Step three is collect a sample of data. Step four is perform a statistical analysis on the same sample data. And step five is come to a conclusion about the null hypothesis. Key to understanding number five says, inferential statistics is involved in such analyses as ANOM, ANOVA, chi-square tests, F-tests, regression, T-tests, and Z-tests. They all use sample data and they all make inferences from them. There are articles in the book and videos on this YouTube channel on each of these types of analyses. In addition to the articles listed above, in addition to the other calls suggested in turn by those articles, it would be a good idea to read the article or see the video, Alpha P, Critical Value and Test Statistic, how they work together. It gives a comprehensive explanation of the interactions among these four important numbers in inferential statistic, and it should help to deepen your understanding. Okay, that concludes our look at the overall subject of inferential statistics. Planned next are two videos on confidence intervals. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash video for the latest status of videos completed and planned. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos or some or more of the, of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos I wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromaz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromaz.com slash blog. I've got some things that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. 
I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.